I, I'm gonna need a moment or two here. Like, you're gonna have to give me a little freaking work here because I, I just don't really know how to react. I don't. Like, I'm so used to in the past when I've come on here to talk about WWE TV shows, whether it's Raw or SmackDown or pay per view, doesn't matter. Like, I'm so used to raging against them and complaining and harping and pissing and moaning about so many things that happen that I don't know what to really do when I actually enjoy one of their shows almost from top to bottom. I, it's such an unfamiliar, dare I say, uncomfortable feeling. Like it's got me out of my comfort zone. It's challenging me. It's actually a kind of welcome feeling here. But I really enjoyed this week's SmackDown. And maybe it's because I haven't been watching much in terms of Raw or SmackDown from beginning to end for a couple of months and just kind of now getting back to the full. Maybe SmackDown's actually been a decent show and I just haven't been watching it. So it, it could certainly be that. Or it could just be that they found some magic beans this week. Maybe Vince was so distracted by all the crap with the third-party content ban for the talent that he didn't have the time to pay attention to the show and the script and rip it all up and do it at the last minute. I don't know. Whatever happened, whatever got the job done this week, I hope they continue to do it. Because this was a great two hours of wrestling television to watch. It really was. And maybe it's no coincidence that it all got started by Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. Let me tell you something. For any of you that have dared to tell vile this man, this character, for any of you that have dared to disagree with me in the past, how can you persist and continue in your perpetual stupidity? Because it is clearly evident that every single thing that Roman Reigns does is likable, relatable, understandable, which makes him a babyface because he is a hero. He may not be the hero you thought or you wanted, but he is the hero you need and needed. Like, look at the promo that Paul Heyman did. Oh, my God. Look at what Paul Heyman did. Like you could see that he felt it in the bar mitzvah of his wings, for God's sakes. He was whispering and so passionate like he was almost moved to tears. It has given him a revitalization, him a new purpose. This is easily the best promo he's cut on TV in a freaking decade. And nothing that Roman said that he got when he got on the mic was bad. Everything hit the mark. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. What a perfect, perfect opening to SmackDown. And then you go from that. It's a tag match. You got heavy machinery. So my boy Otis taking on Miz and Morrison. You know, you know I've always been a Miz Mark, no question. And then seeing Jomo, like, you know, I live vicariously to torture Tony through Jomo. Like, I need my Jomo time. I enjoyed this match. I enjoyed what happened afterwards. They take the money in the bank briefcase. Don't they have it revealed that it's not the briefcase that actually holds the contract. It is Otis's lunch pail. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I really hope Tony is watching this. Because he needs it. You need it. And by God, most importantly of all, I need this for him to watch this. Because it was fantastic. And then you've got... Biggie getting interviewed backstage. He's got a big cake. We're going to celebrate his boy, Xavier Woods' birthday. Until the butcher, Seamus, comes in and says, Pow! Take that. And that spot, dropping him into the freaking... <laughs> Holy Jesus. Dropping him like that into the freaking car windshield. I don't care if something's gimmicked. I don't care. Like, that looks legit and certainly has to feel legit. Like, that was great. But the best thing of all is when you got the butcher, Seamus sitting there and cutting a promo on what happened as the medics are tending to Big E. Like, fantastic. Love the badass visuals of it. The biggest surprise to me of the night was this women's tag team championship. Like, I did not think this match was going to be nearly as good as it actually was. You know, from the very beginning when you've got Nia Jax swinging anybody into the barrier ringside, you're like, oh, is that really the right call here? But everything worked. Everything worked, and what really worked was the brutal, malicious, intentful beatdown of Sasha Banks by Bailey. 
it wasn't just a little bit of beat down, a little bit of a turn. It was clear. It was full. It was necessary. It was absolutely the right call. Only thing I question about it is you already did an ambulance spot with Big E. Do you really want to do another one with Sasha Banks in the same show? But that's more nitpicky than anything else. But it is something to consider, especially since they happen relatively close in time to each other. That said, though, like this was brutal. This was savage. And my hope is, is that this actually takes Sasha Banks away for a little bit. Let it stew. Let it sit. Let it percolate. You've already had this thing between them go on for so damn long anyways. What's a few more months, especially you bring Sasha Bank, you got a Banks back, you got a legit reason for her to clearly be the baby face here. You could set this match up for a big show, whether it's Rumble, whether it's Mania, whatever the case might be. Like, no reason to rush this. Don't have the return match of Clash of Champions. Please, I beg of you, I implore of you, go with this. Run with it. You know, waited so long for this to finally happen. They had the right person turn in the right, really vicious kind of way. The Firefly Funhouse, you know, you've got Bray the Fiend talking about, Bray Wyatt talking about, you know, there's going to be a special friend coming back next week. You know, and you saw when Alexa was doing her little backstage skit with Nikki Cross and she hugged her, there's Ramblin' Rabbit poking around, which leads you to believe it could potentially be her. But in reality, could it be something like a new character, like something Roman Reigns related or Paul Heyman related? Maybe it's like Wobbly Wal Walrus or something like that. Just trying to think here, is it Wobbly Walrus? Is it something like that? I can't wait to see what it's going to be next week. Like, things are going so well that... You know, somebody I've traditionally crapped on a lot, like Taxi Sam or Uber Zane, I actually am appreciating him in this clearly established and clearly defined mid-card role of being the bitter ex, you know, Intercontinental Champion. You can see, clearly see in the character that the Intercontinental Championship means something to him. You know, you've got this back and forth between him and Jeff Hardy now about who's the real Intercontinental Champion. You don't get these types of stories every day. So when you do, I really appreciate them. The only awkward thing about it, frankly, is that AJ Styles is kind of shoehorned in here. I'd rather it just be Sammy and Jeff Hardy and just let those two go at it. Because this is a, is a few, believe it or not, I know this sounds crazy, but again, because it's in the mid card where he belongs, this is the type of thing that I think actually gets a Sami Zayn over. This is the type of thing that he can do well. This is the type of thing that works. Just keep him the frick away from the main event, and that's fine with me. But the big thing, obviously, to come out of this show was the number one contender's fatal four-way match. And earlier on in the night, you know, once Big E got bumped out, who's going to take his place? You know, who's it going to be? I think I saw Don Tony had posted on Twitter, Twitter before it happened saying it should be Jey Uso, even though he said Jimmy. I got what he meant. Um, <laughs> and lo and behold, it was. Like, yet another likable, relatable reason to get behind Roman Reigns. You might say, well, this is just nepotism, and anything it's a reason not to like him. Hey, number one, let's get real. Nepotism rules the world. That's why so many of the rich are actually rich. It's not based off of their talent or their abilities. Believe me, and you know that. Number two, this is an example here of pulling strings to get somebody in his fam that's been overlooked and not given this opportunity in the past, that opportunity. So you could argue that is effective, justifiable nepotism. So now his cousin gets into this big spot and he goes on and wins in a really good main event match. Thank God it wasn't Kenny the damn. Look at me, I'm that real. <laughs> Stupid. But now it's going to be Jey Uso in Roman Reigns. Like, Jey Uso, I'm not sure if I'm digging the haircut or not. Maybe, maybe not. But damn it all. There he is. He's getting the shine. He's winning the main event. So now Roman Reigns, his cuz, has helped him get a main event on SmackDown, gotten him a title opportunity, potentially main event clash of champions. Now you've got all these family dynamics that eventually lead to the Uso brothers coming underneath uh, the the scope of Paul Heyman. What's not the like here? What's not babyface about this? Seriously, though, all joking aside, I really like this show. It was really good. I have to be careful not to get my hopes up too high for next week before they inevitably get shut down. But in its own bubble, in and of itself, this is one of the easiest two hours of any wrestling program I've seen in, to watch in months and months. So it's really, really good. It accomplished so many things. 
And, you know, ultimately, we only have one person to thank, really, and that's Roman Reigns. Because now you have a hero you can admire. Now you have a hero you can respect. Now you have a hero you can really, truly get behind and look up to, by God. Isn't it amazing how everything else kind of falls in place then?